Okay, welcome back to FTL. When I last left off, we had just made a possibly risky weapon decision, and we had finished off Sector 4. So let's move on to Sector 5. This is going to be a nebula sector. And as you will see when I bring up the map, almost the entire sector is a big nebula, so our sensors are not going to do us any good. Uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> I really don't like neb nebula sectors very much. Um, they're not actually super dangerous, but they're just a pain, so I try to avoid them whenever possible. Uh, you do get more time to explore them because they do slow down the rebel fleet somewhat, but I feel like that's more than offset by not being able to see what's going on. Uh, they also seem to have a lot more empty sectors than other uh, areas of the map, so we may be seeing quite a bit of that as I jump around. Here we come across an enemy ship. It's a very small ship, so judging by the size, I'm pretty sure it's only got two crew on board, which means I can probably take them in a fight. So rather than using my weapons, I'm just going to board them immediately. Well, this is going to be a pretty close fight, because my human is actually losing that battle. My Mantis is winning, so I'm going to have to keep very close tabs on his health and make sure he doesn't get killed off before we can finish off that one remaining crew member. But we were able to pull it off. And in addition to that, my Mantis leveled up combat. You can see that with a little yellow fist above him. We get a lot of scrap and a free weapon. That is very good news. I believe, I'm not entirely certain, but I'm pretty sure you have a higher chance of getting equipment and weapons drops from killing off enemy ship's crew instead of destroying them outright, but I could be wrong about that. In any case, we have another weapon. It's a hull laser. It fires two shots, similar to the burst laser, but obviously one less. And the nice thing about these is that they will do double damage in rooms without systems in it, such as, you know, these rooms on my ship that I'm highlighting here. They're a situational weapon, they're not my favorite, but especially since we sold that missile launcher, I, I'm, I will take anything we can get at this point. We don't have the scrap to power it yet, and weapons upgrades are very expensive later on, but we'll be able to do something about that pretty soon, hopefully. We have two distress beacons, and I would like to check them both out, so let's do that. And here is a quick quiz. Uh, basically, it punishes you if you're just clicking through the flavor text like I was, and you have to remember how many moons he just mentioned uh, that are in this, sec in this sector. I feel like it was seven, but I don't know for sure. Let's see what happens. Hey, I got it right. All right, cool. And because I got that right, he joins our crew. Uh, now we have a free Slugman. This is really good news because slugmen are, they're like humans, they're, they're normal, they have 100 hit points, they're not especially good at anything, but they're telepathic, which means that you can see enemy life forms on their other ships, even if your sensors are disabled, which is really handy when you're in a nebula sector like here. You can see, we can see the life signs of the guys on board the ship, and that's thanks to the slug. And because we have upgraded sensors, we can see that it's a whole bunch of Mantis and an Engie. And those Mantis are probably going to board us. Yep. So we're going to have to fight them off before we do any actual combat. And these guys have a med bay of their own as well, which means I have to disable that before I can actually kill off their crew, or they'll just heal up, and I will lose. I'm going to cloak to dodge that incoming missile salvo. My guys are getting low on health. So I'm going to send them over to heal up. And I think I'm just going to destroy the ship outright. I feel like with my current crew, trying to board them is a little bit too much of a risk. So I'm going to use that same strategy I showed earlier. I'm going to use the burst laser to take down the shields, and then I will use the halberd beam to take up the rest of the ship. See, that just does so much damage, it's great. And they're trying to disable my oxygen system, which could be bad news, but I should be able to keep them from doing that. Alright, so they took it out, but we'll be able to kill them off before they can actually suffocate us. 
They've damaged our drone room, but I have that spare Engie, so he can go over and repair that very quickly. We get a nice reward. We finish off those bad guys, and once we get the oxygen system repaired, we will be good to go. Now the drawback to Mantis is that they only repair systems half as quickly as other races, so they're really lousy at fixing stuff, really good at combat. And once they're healed up, we will move on. That was kind of a, a randomized event. We might have ended up in combat there, but instead it was just kind of a, a non-event. Here we have another empty sector, and there's a store up there. This is good, because I'm getting rather low on fuel. Oh, and there's some good weaponry available too. Excellent. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is buy all their fuel and then repair my ship, and then buy the Ion Bomb. I love the Ion Bomb. It is a bomb weapon, so it does use ammunition. But as I said before, bomb weapons teleport straight onto enemy ships. The Ion Bomb is great because it does four ion damage to any system it hits, which means that any system it hits is taken out for something like 30 seconds or a minute, some really long amount of time. So it's amazing for disabling enemy shields or enemy weapons or a med bay or anything like that. It's a really good weapon to have. And it only requires one unit of power. So aside from the fact that it uses ammunition, it's amazing. Here we come across another slug ship. Now thanks to my slug crew member, I can see that they have three people aboard. If I had two Mantis, I would probably go ahead and board these guys, because I'd be confident I could win that fight. But with only one Mantis and a human, that seems a little bit too risky, so I'm just going to go ahead and destroy these guys. And you know what, I think this would be a good time to show off the Ion Bomb in the hull laser as well. So we'll let those charge up. You can see the Ion Bomb takes a pretty long time to charge up, but since these guys can't actually really get through my shields reliably. That's okay. So we'll select the Ion Bomb and target their shield room, and hopefully this will hit. Bomb weapons do have a chance to miss like everything else, but it doesn't happen too often usually. Alright, it hits, and you can see their shields are totally down, and now we are free to just shoot them. I'm going to target my burst laser at their weapons, and I'll target the hull laser at an empty room on their ship. And you can see that just did a ton of damage. I don't want to use more than one Ion Bomb on these guys, since I don't have a ton of ammo, but this is going to be a pretty easy fight. Now, slug ships are a little bit different in that when they offer to surrender frequently, they'll just say, well, you accept what's in our stores in exchange for our lives, and you don't know what they're offering. Uh, sometimes it's something really good, sometimes it's crap. We'll take it, and we'll see what it is. Oh, wow, we got offered a free weapon. That's very cool. Um, however, this is actually the start of a quest to unlock a ship. This is the quest line that will unlock the slug ship type. And since it's available, there's no reason for us not to take it. So instead, I'm going to say we don't want the weapon, we want information. Because of that, it puts a quest marker in the next map sector that we'll be in. And if we go there, something special will happen. We'll see that once we get there. For now, we're just going to clear out the rest of this sector. This is another special encounter. Uh, the slug captain offers to share a drink with you. Uh, you can either drink or refuse. Um, slugs are not very trustworthy, um, so this drink is actually spiked, I believe. So if you just drink, uh, bad stuff happens. If you refuse, he gets offended and you might have to fight him, but, you know, no big deal there. We can probably take him in a fight. If <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have a rock crew member, you can have him drink, and because they're so much tougher, he'll be like, hey, that was spiked, and that's the blue option that you can get. But since we don't have a rock crew member, we're just going to refuse. He gets offended, blah, blah, blah. 
He's got three shields, so I definitely want to try and use an Ion Bomb to disable them. He's also got a Missile Launcher, so now is a good time to show off the Defense Drone. Gonna have to turn off a couple of my systems to get enough power for it. But once we have that power, we can turn it on. And now we have a little drone of our own. And that'll just orbit our ship, and it'll shoot down incoming missiles, as you can see there. Um, it doesn't have a 100% chance to shoot down missiles when they come in, but 9 times out of 10, it will take care of them. Alright, the Ion Bomb hit. So now it's just a matter of taking down the rest of his shielding and doing some damage with the hull laser. I don't want to use another Ion Bomb on him, though, so I'm going to detarget that. Once again, he's offering to surrender, but this guy tried to poison us. He's a jerk. I'm going to finish him off so he doesn't, you know, poison anybody else. One thing I really like about this game is that you can make lots of different little choices that don't really affect the overall, like, story of the game, because there really isn't much of one, but they definitely affect kind of the character of the people on your ship that you're piloting. Like, you can be a super nice guy, let everybody live, try to be nice, or you can be a huge dick and just screw everybody over. And I think it's, it's fun and it lends itself to the replayability of the game. All right, here we are being hailed by a ship, and he gets us, he allows us to choose our own death, and basically whatever we pick is a system on our ship that he will disable, um, or we can bribe him. I, I'm not going to bribe this guy. He sounds like a dick. So instead, I'm going to let him disable my oxygen. I'm pretty sure I can take him out before my crew suffocates, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. You can see my oxygen level is slowly dropping because he's had it disabled. But between the burst laser and the halberd beam, I should be able to take him out before that becomes an issue. I could board him, but again, I really don't want to take a huge risk right now if I can help it. So instead, I think I'm just going to take out his ship. And it shouldn't be too difficult. One thing you'll see me doing here is I'm detargeting my weapons because with this particular combination and that many shields, you want to be firing everything all at once to make the most out of it. So once they're both fully charged, then I'll go in and retarget everything. And with that, we get a reward, our oxygen comes back on, and we can move on. You can see it didn't even get that low because we were able to take him out pretty quickly. Here we come across more pirates. Here we have a chance to try and avoid the fight, but really on easy mode there's never any reason to avoid fights unless your ship is heavily, heavily damaged or you just have like no weaponry. But if you're doing things right, that shouldn't happen. These guys only have two crew and no med bay, so as soon as that Zoltan shield goes down, I'm gonna board them. Uh, the Zoltan shield does block boarding in addition to everything else, so... I won't be able to go over until now. You'll notice that even though it doesn't go through shields, the halberd beam does do damage to the Zoltan shield, so it, you can use it in that way. And this should be a pretty easy fight. Oh, took a hit to our oxygen, but my Angie should be able to get that fixed up really quickly. There we go. That was a quick fight, and we got yet another hull laser out of it, so that's very cool. I probably won't end up using both hull lasers because I think the ion bomb is more useful, but it's certainly nice to have. We could sell it for some cash later. Now, speaking of cash, we have 160 scrap, so I think it's a good time to do some more upgrading. I'm going to buy one more unit of weapon power. And let's see. I think I'll just spend the rest on reactor power for now, because this way we can power all of our systems. 
and still have a little bit left over for powering drones. And this is good. Now we can use the ion bomb and our burst laser and halberd beam. We get some free stuff. And we are approaching the end of this sector. Here we have another one of those weapons dealer, but again, we don't even have enough scrap to take that risk, so I'm just going to go ahead and attack him. And this guy has a med bay. Um, I really wish I had another mantis, because three on two with a human crew member is not very good odds. And this guy has a pretty nasty weapon set up. Two burst laser twos and a regular laser. I definitely need to remember to cloak to dodge those incoming shots. You can see that's six incoming shots. There's no way my shields could stand up to that. Thankfully, we should be able to disable him pretty quickly. He's offering us a decent reward for surrender. That's some fuel we could use, but I'd really rather have the extra scrap. There we go. More scrap. And with that, we are at the end of the sector. Alright, I think we can just move straight to the next one from there. It'll be another civilian sector, which is always good news. And this late in the game, it's definitely time to start thinking about upgrading your shields again. I mean, really, you can never upgrade your shields too soon. It's always good to get them as high as you can early on. We've just been coming across other stuff that I kind of pounced on when it was available. But only two levels of shields isn't really enough for this point in the game. So I am going to have to start saving up some scrap so I can afford to upgrade that. We get some scrap and a free missile weapon. That's good news. Um, I'm going to jump up to that store so I can buy some fuel and sell off those weapons I'm not using. So we'll go over to the sell menu. I'm going to sell that hull laser we don't need, and I'm going to sell that missile launcher too. Um, I really, the only missile weapon in the game I really like is the starting one that this ship gets, the Artemis. Um, I feel like all of the other ones take too long to fire, require too much power, and don't do enough damage to really make it worth for while. I feel like those weapon slots can always be spent on something better unless you're desperate. So I'm going to go ahead and sell that too. Fix up my ship, buy a bunch of fuel, and let's see if I can afford to upgrade my shields. You can see this is going to cost me 100 scrap just to get the shield upgrades, and then another 30 for another brick of power. So it was very expensive, but three levels of shielding is plenty. Um, at least until the very end of the game, three should be enough to get you through most situations. And here we find ourselves near an explosive sun. Uh, the great thing about having upgraded sensors on board your ship is you can see what kind of crew the enemy ship has. Here, it's just two Engi, and they only do 50% damage in combat. So now is a perfect time to board their ship. I know I'll win this fight because I'm just going to be doing way more damage than they can to me. some fires on board our ship. I'm going to send my slugman into the weapons bay because I really want that one to get put out as quickly as possible. And like repairing your systems, the more people you have fighting a fire, the quicker it'll go out. And then I'll send my Engi in to deal with this other one in the empty room down here. We get a very nice reward for that. Six fuel and 75 scrap. Bring my guys back on board and have them heal up while I deal with those fires. Oops, accidentally sent my Engi to the med bay when I didn't mean to. Okay, let's jump away. Right now we're going to head for this quest marker down here because that's the end of that slug quest that we picked up in the last sector. 
Here we come across another mantis asking for sanctuary like before. I'm going to take that risk again and see if he's on the up and up. It turns out he was. So now we have an extra crew member and no room for him. You can only have a maximum of eight people on your ship, and we have nine at the moment. So I have to decide if I want to keep him and dismiss somebody else or just let him go. As much as I like having the Engi, I would really, really love to have um, an extra boarding crew guy instead. But, since my other boarding guy is just a human, and he hasn't leveled up any of his skills, I think I can afford to let him go and keep this new Mantis instead. That way I haven't really missed out on anything. And I'm immediately going to use my shiny new Mantis crew member to invade this ship and hopefully take these guys out. And all Mantis boarding party is really, really formidable. Um, there is not too much that can stand in their way unless they're like outnumbered two to one. And especially once they've gotten a couple levels in combat, so they're doing extra damage, it's very, very nice to have. We get another good reward for that. As you can see, the scrap rewards do ramp up as you progress through the game, along with the difficulty of the enemies. Oh, we have a store. Perfect timing, too, because we have a lot of scrap once again. Alright, you can see here I have two free slots for augmentations, and there are some nice ones available here. Stealth weapons means that while you're cloaked, you can fire and it will not disrupt your cloaking. Normally, if you fire weapons while cloaked, it will drastically cut the amount of time that you stay in cloak. Um, it's pretty handy. I haven't found a ton of use for it, just because I really only use cloaking defensively anyhow. Um, so I'm going to skip that, but I am going to buy the Scrap Recovery Arm. Even though it's late in the game, it's still nice. You get 10% more scrap from any source, which really adds up pretty rapidly. With all of that said and done, I'm just looking through my upgrades here to see what I want to focus on next. And I think I'm going to spend some scrap on one more weapon upgrade. Uh, you can have a maximum of eight slots dedicated to weapon capacity, and if you look here, we have exactly eight slots of capacity in terms of power requirements of our weapons. First laser takes two, halberd beam takes three, so that's five. Ion bomb takes one, which is six, and then this hull laser will take two, which is eight. So if we can max out our weapons, we'll be able to use everything all at the same time, which will be really nice. Right now, though, let's go finish off this quest. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm just going on for memory here, and I believe the correct thing to do is to try and tail them without being noticed. Yes, and then because we have either a slug crew member or upgraded sensors, we get these blue options, which is what we want to take and that gets us into a fight. They're gonna try and jump away, but we have a crew teleporter, so we'll just jump on there and take them out. We should be able to disable their crew before they can actually get out of there. There we go. We have disabled their crew, and if I had not already unlocked it, this would be the point where we unlock the slug ship for us to use in future playthroughs. Uh, since we already unlocked it, we just get a nice scrap upgrade and free long-range scanners augmentation, which is actually really handy. The long-range scanners basically give you more detailed information about any adjacent jump beacons. Uh, you can't see it here really, but basically uh, it will tell you if any of the beacons you're about to jump to is hostile, or has a hazard, or has just an empty event, that sort of thing. So it's pretty handy. It's especially good in nebulas, because then you'll be able to avoid some of the negative events that can happen there. We get some free scrap from that Zoltan study encounter again. 
just going to wait for my boarding party to heal up before I move on. Alright, we're running a little a bit low on time here, so I think I can just visit one more sector before we go to the exit gate. And once again, we get scrap and a free weapon. Um, I'm not sure how the randomization works in this game, but it definitely seems like on some playthrough playthroughs you'll get tons and tons of weapon drops or tons of free augments or things like that, and then on others you just won't get anything. Uh, I don't know if it's totally random or if it works on like a loot table basis or what, but this is definitely one of those playthroughs where I am just swimming in weaponry, which is cool. Um, it's nice to be able to show things off. Uh, speaking of showing things off, I think now is the time to make our final weapon upgrade and buy two more bricks of power, because with that done, now we can use all of our weapons at once. Excellent. We are in very good shape. Oh, there's a distress beacon, uh, but we won't be able to do that and get to the exit at the same time. Still, we're the good guys, so let's go check that out. We have a pirate ship trapped between two rocks at an asteroid field. We could try to save them just by shooting at the rocks, we could just destroy the ship, or because we have a beam weapon, our halberd beam, we can try and carefully cut them out. It's a blue option, blue options are good, so let's take that. And because of that, we save the ship and we get a nice reward. If you choose the uh, just try to shoot the rocks, there's a chance that you'll actually destroy the ship and you won't get much of a reward. And if you do save the ship, then it's still smaller than taking the blue option. It looks like we'll just be able to make it to the exit beacon before the Rebel fleet. And we are. Good news. And we come across slavers. I'm actually surprised we haven't come across this before. Uh, basically, these guys are what they sound like. They are slave traders. Uh, if we had enough scrap, we could offer to buy somebody off of them. We could ignore them, or we could attack them. They're slavers. That's ugh, that's horrible. We are going to attack these guys. They have a Zoltan shield, but we have an ion bomb, and ion weapons do massive bonus damage against the Zoltan shield. So I'm just going to use the ion bomb to take out the shield. It should take it out in one shot, and then I'll go ahead and board them with my mantis. Uh, he did fire a missile at me, so I should probably turn on a defense drone shoot that down. I could have cloaked to dodge it, but it would take longer for my cloaker to recharge than it would for my missile to, for their missile rather, to actually reload. Looks like my ion bomb missed, so I'm going to have to use my regular weapons to take down their shield. That wasn't too hard though, and now I'll be able to board them. See, my crew took a little bit of damage in that last attack, so I'm going to send them over to heal up while I deal with the enemy ship. And one of my Mantis leveled up in combat again, which is always nice. And this last crew member should be fairly easy. Alright, uh, you can see we have some fire on board our ship here, but fire needs oxygen to burn. So if we suck all the air out of that room, that fire will go out on its own very important to keep in mind. It can save your butt. Alright, we get a nice reward and another crew member offers to join up. We don't have room for him and we don't really need another Engi at this point, so I'm just gonna let him go. Bring my guys back on board my ship to heal up. Remember to shut those doors because you don't want any rooms exposed to the vacuum for no reason. You might forget about it and it could come back to bite you in the ass later on. Alright, they're all healed up. And I think now is a good time to buy a couple more units of reactor power and fully upgrade our door system. With fully upgraded doors, it'll take enemies much, much, much longer to actually break through them, which is great for defending your ship from enemy boarders. And it's really good at slowing down the spread of fire as well. And with that extra power, now we can run all of our systems and the defense drone at the same time, so we are in extremely good shape. Which is good, because we're about to get to the penultimate sector, and that is what I will tackle next time. 
see you then.